Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll focus on automated machine learning with a regression based problem. The first thing while I do the intro is that I'll install some libraries. So pip install, and then we are going to use tpods as our machine learning or automated machine learning library. And then pip install and then buy data sets so that we can retrieve the data set for us to use. The goal of automated machine learning is to make our lives easier. It would basically run several different models to attempt to find which one is the one that would yield the best accuracy. In a sense, it is this machine learning or this advanced machine learning made easy. That is at least how I perceive it in the sense that you basically just throw a data set to it and then you specify some configurations like we will and then with its due time it will actually yield a good result so it will continuously improve to try and test to find the best results i'll leave the link for this uh, collapse script in the comments of this video if you're interested in learning more about content that i create I'm also leaving the link to my Udemy courses in the description of this video. The next step is to then import the libraries after we have installed them. And let me open a new cell line. And then from a teapot, I want to import the teapot regressor. And let me take the hashtag from here. So because this is not a comment. And then from by data set, I want to import data. And then lastly, the one that I want to do is to import pandas as PD. Here we go. Pandas as PD. Here we go. So control enter and everything should work itself. And if I open a new code, or better yet, a cell to code. I mean, there's a couple of future warnings, but nothing to worry about. Then we get data. So get data as a comment. And then, so data equals to data open parenthesis. And then let's include housing with a capital H. So don't forget that. And then let's have a look at our data. So data dot hat. And here we go. And we can see the data set that we have. It is about housing prices. So we have the price as the dependent variable. And then we have a bunch of other characteristics that would allow us to study the housing prices. On top, there's a lot of also string variables here. And this is actually the one thing that I want to take care of because I want to transform them into dummy variables. As a result, we go to our data prep and then we open a new cell and then we'll leave as a comment transform string into dummy and let me also correct it here so transform and it is super super simple so let's go so data equals to pandas so pt dot get underscore uh, dummies here we go and then open parenthesis, we include data and then drop first equals to true so that we don't fall into the dummy variable trap. Let's have a look at the result of this. So data.head and we can see that we have our price here. And now instead of having this yes and no's, now we have ones and zeros. Next step is to isolate the X and y so open a new cell so isolate x and y and here we go so y equals 2 and it is our data set and we have our price variable over here so data dot price and then what we would have so we have the x equals 2 and it is our data dot i lock and then we want all the observations and then we want to start from the second column. So index one and then colon because it's starting from there. Here we go. Let's do uh, control enter and see if it runs. And here you go. So absolutely worked. And now we 
transform. So we want a train and test split. And then we need to import something. We need to import from sklearn dot model selection. We import the train test split. And then we create this x train x test and then the y train and finally the y test equals to we use the function that we have just imported so the train test split inside we include the x and then the y we can also include a test split here you go so our test size better yet equals to 0 0.2 and then so that you get the same results as me random state and then i use 1502 there we go and again let's do control enter and then when it comes to all the preparations this is actually it and then there's just one more cell line that i need to create which is so teapot is the comment and then we create our teapot let's call it like that and then we use the teapot regressor that we imported initially and then we include generations so this is the amount of pipelines that we would like to create and let's put 10 so that it also does not take a lot of time so the goal is for you to see so population size and this is more okay how many elements how many individuals should be included in each pipeline or in each generation Let's include verbosity equals to two. And then finally, uh, random state equals to 15, uh, zero two. After that, so we would use the teapot to fit it to our data, to our X train, and then to our Y train. And then we would evaluate. So print, and then the teapot dot score between the x test and then the y test and to recap what this would do so we we'll create this uh, teapot model this teapot object which has this amount of generations and has this amount of population size which is the elements per generation we would then fit it to our training data and then we would print the score so teapot.score so there's an e missing uh, over here and let's do control enter and what i'll do so let me google so stop watch here we go and let's put start and let's see how long it this takes to run all righty we are back it took around six minutes and 43 seconds i would highlight though that i also chose a small amount of uh, generations and also of population size just for you to have a grasp the default values would have been 104 uh, generations and also 104 population size so this would have actually increased almost exponentially nonetheless if you have to run it overnight then i think that's perfectly fine then if we are to have a look what was the best model then we see that it was actually a mixed combination of the random forest regressor with a ridge regression and then you have as well some of the hyperparameters that have yielded this amount of error super super simple a very easy way in order for you to keep track of what you're doing and also to optimize it in an almost no code way I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, have fun.